Hello and welcome back. Um, this is the first time in almost a month that I posted a video. I've been pretty busy with work and uh, my personal life is kind of getting crazy too. I had to take my son to college, summer vacation, everything else, and you know, work is picking up. So, what brings me here is Firebase. Um, Firebase is used by a lot of people, it's used by tons of people in the um, Ionic Framework community and in the web development, mobile development basically develop community overall. So I started my journey on trying to figure out how the hell am I going to do Google authentication inside of a Vue.js app written in Ionic that needs to work in web and native device. Uh, the old hack of doing it with the um, in-app browser just doesn't seem to be the way to go anymore. I found the plugin that's set up to just handle OAuth by itself, but you have to wire everything else together. And then I came across this capacitor Firebase solution. So this is a, it's a pretty decent plugin. Um, as I've said in, in the notes before, it's, I don't believe it's 100% there yet, but it got me 90% of the way to where I needed to go. Um, it was a little bit challenging because I identified a problem, which is that when running this plugin on native devices, the um, auth state change event fires before your application is up and running. So basically, you never find out that you have an existing user, um, which isn't a good look. So I had to hack my way around it. And this video is about the hack, um, about the plugin, and also a way to kind of help folks who are trying to get this to work for themselves, understand it, and understand it from a non-angular perspective. This is um, the solution that I've written in the back here that I'm gonna walk through is written in Vue.js. And then I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna modify it to work for React and then I'll post them both. Um, and I'll add the links to the videos. But just kind of walking through the documentation, first of all, this thing is very neatly done. I mean, this, this guy has been extremely thorough. I have not touched on anything else other than the authentication because that's all I need. Just as a side note, if you come to this plugin, this plugin does not support accessing Firebase or Firestore. So it's just gonna, if you're trying, so what I'm trying to use it for is to get the authentication. Um, so I use it for the authentication and then what the plugin also requires you to do if you're going to try to access the database after you authenticate natively, you then need to authenticate in the JavaScript um, API. Seems a little weird, but that's the hack that, and it works. And if, if you tie it all together appropriately, you get the solution that you're looking for. Like I said, I'm only here because I needed Google Auth. Otherwise, I just would have done the whole damn thing in JavaScript. So let's kind of walk through what we got here. So you click here on authentication. Um, it clearly explains how to set up and install the capacitor plugin. Like a bunch of plugins, sometimes you need to go in and you need to make modifications to the um, supporting files. And so you need to make your modifications um, to your app delegate Swift. Like I said, I'm posting my uh, whole project so you can download it and run it and see how it works. And then the, I mean, it's very cool how they give you the breakdown for what you need to do based on what your authentication is you're gonna support. Uh, right now, I'm just supporting Google Auth. I haven't finished Twitter Auth. I probably won't. Basic email. And I've also done sign in with phone number. As a note for sign in with phone number, it does not work. The plugin does not support it on the web. So you need to kind of roll your own for the web. But I've also included that in my example. So here's the important part to remember right here. It says, please note that this plugin uses third party SDKs to off offer native sign in. These SDKs can initialize on their own and collect various data. So that's an important note. The other thing is down here, he shows you how to set up configure uh, capacitor. You know, you need to set up in the um, capacitor config JSON to identify the providers that you're using. And then he shows you how to set it up in config.ts. This is his working demo that is written in Angular. Um, which is helpful to kind of get you rolling. But um, if you're running into challenges in, on some other platform and you are not an Angular guy, I mean, I started with Angular, so I was able to kind of work my way through this example and kind of figure out how to get out of it what I needed. 
But like I said, that's why I'm going to provide a Vue.js and a um, and a React example. But what's the next thing I want to show? So this is the authentication demo. He, oh yeah, the big thing here is that he mentions. And I was working with another gentleman who was trying to get this working and he ran into the same problem. He mentions down here in the documentation, where is it? Scroll down, let me see if I can find it. But basically what happens is after you log in with any, other, any of these methods, you need to log in on your own to the JavaScript SDK. Okay, where the hell is that documented? Oh, right here. For web, uh, for web authentication of Firebase just JavaScript SDK is used, this only works to a limited extent on Android and iOS in a web views. For native authentication, the native SDKs for Firebase blah blah use, these offer functionalities, blah blah. However, this is the key part right here. However, after a login with native SDKs, the user is only logged in on the native layer of the app. If the user should also be logged in on the web layer, additional steps are required. So basically what he's saying is that when I log in with Google Auth here, it's just logging me in on native. It's not logging me in on JavaScript. So if you need to use the database, right, you've got to go and you then need to log in with JavaScript. So then you can get access to a database object. So then you can make the queries. So, um, and he does provide additional information here on this link which shows you, and so for example, he's got an example right here. So basically what happens is, I'll use a Google example. You make the API call here to authenticate with Google. You get your result. You use the result to create a Google Auth provider credential. And then this is the call to the JavaScript API to sign in to the JavaScript. So this way you're signed in at both levels. And this is critical for the workaround that I did to get, um, the save authentication state to work on JavaScript. Because if you don't sign in on both sides, when you attempt to open the application again, the JavaScript side will not find an existing user. And so you will never log in, even though the native side does find the user. So that's really important to note. And it's identified in my example. So I spoke a lot about it. Um, feel free to leave questions in the comments below if you have any concerns. But now I'm gonna kind of jump into my demo and show you the code that I have and kind of where I implemented the workaround. So first off, let's see, we followed his instructions for setting up capacitor config. I have my Google, I have Twitter, and I have the phone. Like I said, I haven't finished Twitter. And then let me move my big head. Here's capacitor config. And then let's go into what I've done in Vue is I've created a composable that manages all of the Firebase interaction. I'll create a hook when I do the uh, React one. Um, but here I load in all my Firebase configuration. I have everything stored in a .env file, and this is how you kind of load it up into the config. And then I have this uh, composable that manages everything. So one of the things that I'm doing is I don't want my app to do anything until I'm absolutely certain that Firebase is completely initialized and I've done my auth my auth state check. And so if you go down here into main.ts, you can see I have my hook here and I just return the initialize. I do all the setup that I need to do. There might be a better way to do this. I'm jumping between multiple languages and so sometimes some things fall off. I found this solution and it works. So I'm basically watching this initialized value. And once I get to sit, once this initialized value changes, I probably should check for true. But once it basically changes, then I go and I mount the app and then we're off and running. Because at this point, I'm either, either gonna have a user or I'm not gonna have a user. So let's go back to the Firebase service. I've, I tried to explain everything that I could here in the comments. And so what's basically happening is this ad listener, so this Firebase authentication, this is the plugin, right? This ad listener event, just it fires on native, but it fires way too early. So it's pointless for us to use um, if it's not native. So basically that's what this is doing. I'm not, I'm basically saying don't use this unless I'm on native. When I'm, but either way, like I said, you always need the JavaScript SDK if you're going to make database calls. So here I initialize the Firebase um, JavaScript SDK. I get my database. And then here's where I'm going to keep track of kind of my auth instance. Um, and then now here, if I'm on the native platform 
and I need the user information, I need to basically, you know, initialize my auth session here, but then here I'm waiting for my state change event to get the real user. So when this actually fires, then I set my initialize to true. So, no net, so then now back here in my main state, then the rest of my application will go along and run. And so that's how I've kind of worked around the issue that I ran into. Now, the other thing is the kind of login and how I mentioned you need to make sure you log in on both sides. So if we go here to home page, this is basically copied directly from what he did, but I just kind of want to walk through it to, to make sure you understand. So here, when I'm signing in with Google, I use this once again, this is the plugin. I sign in and I get my result. I take that result. I, I create a Google auth provider and then I sign in locally. This will sign me in locally, which will get me access to a local user that has been authenticated and works on JavaScript. So then I can use that user with the database. Same thing here with my sign in Twitter. And then also because um, sign in and phone number doesn't work on the web, what I'm saying is if it's not the native pad of platform, i.e. the web, then I have a different approach and I've written a function. Where did that function go? So this is not, if it's not native, then use my web function, copy find. So here's my web function and I have all the setup and everything for it to work. So let's just kind of go through a quick demo here. And so here's my Google auth. I get the nice native UI. I authenticate and I'm getting all my user information back and then kind of, um, hold on, let me see if I can, I'm not displaying it on the UI, but if I kind of bring my, my uh, Safari over here and let's see, localhost, you can see everything that happened. And then down here, this is me querying my database to make sure that I can get data back. So that's, and so this is my, this is my on auth state change, which lets me know that this is coming from my JavaScript startup because actually you can see that this app listener is fired way up here. What, what do we want to do next? All right. And then we need to sign out again. Um, so let's refresh all this and clear this out. And then now let's refresh my app again. All right, so I got no user. So my user's cleared out everywhere. And then now let's try to sign in with phone number. Oh, I need to put a phone number in, sorry, my bad. Uh, one. Oh, I need my plus in the front. And in a more professional app, you'd kind of manage this to make sure that the phone number was structured appropriately. And then now the code. And then I'm authenticated. And you can see once again that it worked because after I authenticated, it made the call to the database to pull the data and my data is locked down. And you can see this is all the phone number information. So that's really quickly what I wanted to show. This was really just to explain a way to get this to work for you in Vue.js. And like I said, I'll um, also write a React example. Definitely check out the plugin. Um, it, it, uh, excuse me, it handled all the heavy stuff for me. I just needed to get over this last bump. Um, and I think it works out pretty well. I'm probably gonna check it out to um, work on the messaging. Let's see, what was the other feature that I saw that it had here that I'm gonna use it for? Let's go back. I am probably going to integrate um, cloud messaging using this also. So um, it'd be interesting to see how that goes along. And once again, once I get that working, I'll also post some examples in Vue and React on how to get all that going. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you're still here, please make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I will see you next time around. Thank you and bye.